what's going on y'all it's cone back here again today with another video and today i'm going to talk about my 2024 nba award winners we're going to go through all the major ones mvp depoy rookie of the year mip and so on and so forth as well as my all nba teams and my all defensive teams and my all rookie team so basically we've got a lot to get through i'm also going to give honorable mentions in addition to my winner i won't talk about every single candidate so if there's somebody i don't mention definitely make sure to mention them down below in the comments and let me know who you have winning these award races i feel like there are a few of them that are pretty locked in. I don't think there's many other ways you could go, but there are quite a few of these where I could see you going one way or another, not picking the favorite, going a bit off the beaten path. So I'd love to know your opinions, especially when we get back down to the all NBA teams and stuff, because now those are positionless. Keep in mind, there is a 65 games played limit. So if there's a player I don't put on these lists, there's a good chance that they just didn't reach that threshold. So make sure to keep that in mind. And yeah, I think that's all I've got for now. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the future videos. Let's get into my award picks. Let's go ahead and kick things off with Rookie of the Year. This was a race that was really fierce for majority of the season between Victor Wembanyama and Chet Holmgren. And as a Thunder fan, you know, I was pushing the Chet agenda. I want to see him win. But ultimately, I think it has to go to Victor Wembanyama. The stats are unbelievable. He's averaging nearly four blocks per game, 20 points per game, bunch of rebounds, diming up as of recently, getting more and more efficient. He had a five by five this season, nearly had two in back to back days. Unbelievable stuff from Victor Wembanyama. He may have just had the greatest rookie season of all time. He's going to be on an all-defensive team. He's probably going to finish top five in Depoy voting. He did everything for this team. There's really nothing that Vic didn't do, I guess, other than win games, and that is an argument in Chet's favor. Chet was also fantastic. The very clear number two in my eyes for this award. Elite rim protector, probably going to end up on an all-defensive team or at the very least in that conversation. He was efficient to scoring, a big reason why the Thunder towards the top of the standings. Chet also, I think, had one of the better rookie seasons we've ever seen. It's just that Vic, again, may have had the single best one. So I do give the nod to Victor Wimbanyama. I'll concede my bias here, but I do think Chet finishes as a strong second. And in the third spot, it's Brandon Miller. I think he's pretty clearly the number three. Had a great season for Charlotte. I was someone who kind of doubted him a little bit coming into the season, and Brandon Miller has been fantastic. I've become a big fan of his, and I think he's going to be really special for years to come over there for the Hornets. Next up for most improved player, I'm going to go with Tyrese Maxey. I know some people aren't going to be happy about that. People don't love when a guy goes from like a fringe all-star and being pretty good to great and all-star level player, kind of similar to how John Morant did a few years ago. But in my opinion, Maxey isn't quite the same situation. Maxey wasn't a second overall pick like Ja was. Maxey had a lot of weight thrown onto his shoulders this season where he was going to be asked to save the guard position for this franchise with James Harden leaving, Joel Embiid missing a bunch of the year. He could have kind of crumbled under that pressure and those expectations, and instead, he exceeded them. He averaged 26 points per game, did it efficiently, and kept fully afloat enough to the point where we're in the final few days of the season, and the Sixers, again, with Joel Embiid, who felt like the guy who was going to run away with the MVP award earlier on the season, missed a majority of the year. The fact that they still have a chance to move up in the standings this late in the season to like a five or a six spot is pretty remarkable. So I think Maxi deserves a lot of flowers for that. Again, made his first all-star game. And I think he even has a little bit of an all-NBA case. I don't know if he does make it. I, spoiler, don't have him on my list. But I think there is an argument for him to make that. What he's done all season has been extremely impressive. I love what he's brought to the table. I think he's gonna be one of the best guards in the East for a while. Second place, I think is pretty clearly Kobe White. For a little bit, I was in his camp as the winner. But eventually he kind of tailed off towards the end of the season. It just wasn't the best way to finish out his campaign. While Maxi felt like kept it a little bit more steady, had a bit more weight on him. So I am going to lean Maxi slightly over Kobe White. Although if you pick him and if he does win the award, I would love to see it. Great season from him. I also want to show some love to Jalen Williams of the OKC Thunder. I know there's this unspoken rule that second year players can't win MIP. I hate that to be honest, because what Jada has done for the Thunder this season has flown so far under the radar. I feel like Shea gets a lot of love as well as Chet Holmgren and j is getting more and more attention, but it hasn't been enough. The way that he's been one of the most efficient players in the world in the clutch this season, he's been unbelievable in fourth quarters, one of the top scorers out of anybody in the league in fourth quarters this year. The defense has leveled up his ability to create shots on ball, play off ball. He's so versatile, plays a number of positions for us. Just otherworldly stuff from j -Dub. I know he's not going to win the award because again, there is that second year stigma 
with MIP, but I think he has easily been one of the most improved players this season. And I think even next year, he could again be in the running because I think he has so much room to still get better. Also want to show love to Jalen Johnson. He, of course, didn't hit the game's play threshold, dealt with that injury that kept him out for a lot of the year. But Jalen Johnson was fantastic. If he stayed healthy the whole year, there was a good chance that this award might have been his. Really made himself a cornerstone over there in Atlanta. Next, let's do six man of the year. And for this one, I am going to go with Malik Monk. What he did this entire season for Sacramento as one of the most clutch players in the league, an incredible score, capable of these insane explosions, a really solid playmaker. That was the big leap it felt like he took this season, being their secondary player point guard ball handler and facilitator behind De'Aaron Fox. It was really special stuff from Malik Monk. He's really grown into this role as this elite six man over the past couple of years, going from someone who Charlotte ended up not re-signing to going over to the Lakers and signing that minimum deal to getting a decent deal here with the Kings. And now this offseason, he's in line for a crazy contract. Teams are going to be throwing offers at him and it's well-deserved. Malik Monk was the most impactful player off the bench this season, if you ask me. So obviously that means he wins six man of the year. Some other guys I want to show love to include Nas Reed. If you pick him, don't blame you. He's my second place finisher. Just ridiculous stuff from him this entire season. Shooting over 40% from three with Cat being hurt. Has had to step up quite a bit and he's been great in that role, which I do feel like is part of this six-man role. It doesn't always have to be what you do off the bench, but also being that usual bench player that then maybe has to step in for a couple games to start in the absence of a star player. I think that speaks a lot to his versatility, his ability to stay ready in those moments. He's been absolutely incredible. Shout out to Nas Reed. One of my favorite players and the whole lead to watch. Norman Powell, as well for the Clippers, has been great all season, been a big spark plug for them. And Bogdan Bogdanovich, if the Hawks were a little bit better, I feel like he would be getting more love for this award, but Bogey was great all season, shout out to him. And I honestly hope he gets in a better situation going forward because I don't think he gets enough love for how great this year was. Now let's move on to coach of the year. I think most people like me are gonna pick Mark Dagnall of the Oklahoma City Thunder. I don't even think this is that biased of a pick. I just straight up think he's gonna win it. The Thunder are in the battle for the one seed with four games left in the season, three games depending on the team. That's not a spot that a lot of people thought they would be in. This team has a chance to win like 55 games way beyond their over-under mark from the beginning of the season. It's a really young squad, one of the youngest in NBA history, and they're still this good. The way that they're so bought in on both ends, a top five offense as well as defense. They've been phenomenal this entire year. I have never really taken a step back outside of these past few games when they've dealt with some injuries. You can say you expected the Thunder to be here. Basically, nobody did, and I'm a Thunder fan. I'm a biased Thunder fan. I didn't think we were going to be this good. Mark Daniel was a top three finisher last year. He should win the award this season. Other guys who are deserving of love include Jamal Mosley over there for the Magic. That's another team that a lot of people didn't expect to be this good this season. They've been fighting for the two, three, four seeds. Home court advantage in the first round even is insane for Orlando at this point in the rebuild. I thought this was the year that maybe they take a jump to the play and maybe they still are out of it. Did not expect them to be in the thick of the Eastern Conference home court race. This late in the season, shout out to him, especially building that ridiculous defense over there, that special stuff. Ime Odoka, I think also deserves some love for really lifting the Rockets out of the gutter of the Western Conference the past few years, especially when you take into account this late season run they made trying to push the play and ultimately didn't get there, but even still keeping that resolve with Shengun going down, I think is impressive. And Chris Finch of the Minnesota Timberwolves, a team that not a lot of people picked to potentially finish as the one seed. I think he deserves a lot of love for making that Rudy Gobert cat thing work when many thought it wouldn't. Now I want to go ahead and do defensive player of the year. This one I feel like has been wrapped up forever. It's Rudy Gobert. The Wolves have been the best defense in the league basically the whole season. He's been elite protecting the rim like he always has, the best anchor in basketball. Rudy Gobert is doing it like nobody else at the moment. I think he should go ahead and win another deep boy, just adding on to his stacked resume. He's going to be a Hall of Famer, and it's been a great bounce back from him going from last season where people thought he lost a step to showing the world once again why he is one of the best defenders of all time. I think it's no-brainer. It has to be Rudy Gobert, although there are a lot of other great defenders that are deserving of shout-outs, like Victor Wembanyama, the Spurs team defense, not good, but when Vic's on the floor, it's ridiculous, and I've never seen a player deter guys away from the rim at the rate that Vic does. There are so many great scores that won't even look at the rim when Vic is anywhere close. He slows down fast breaks just by existing. And I think eventually Vic's going to win like five, six, seven D poise. I wouldn't even be surprised that's how impactful he is. I think that could start next season, but this year, I think it's just a little bit too early. Again, with the Spurs being pretty rough as a team overall defensively. Anthony Davis, I think is deserving of love here as well. Was great all season on that end, continuing to impact the game defensively at a very high level. Bam Adebayo, one of the league's most versatile 
how Defenders also deserves love as well. And Herb Jones, I know bigs are almost always going to win this award, but if we want to talk about the best wing defenders in the world, I think Herb Jones currently holds that title. Next, let's do Clutch Player of the Year. This is a bit of a weird award because I feel like you just look at Clutch stats and say, okay, this guy's the best ones and boom, he wins. I personally went Steph Curry. To me, it's between him and DeMar DeRozan. Their stats are basically identical. Steph is just a little bit more efficient and has a few more points on less games played. So I am going to go Steph Curry. Although if you like the higher volume of DeMar DeRozan playing in more clutch games, I know he's a couple game winners, but so does Steph. It's just kind of pick them for one of those two guys if you ask me. So I went with Steph Curry. You can go to Mar if you want. And then beyond those guys, I think it's just basically whoever. I want to give a shout to Shea. The stuff I've seen him doing the clutch all season has been ridiculous. And Kyrie Irving, he has ridiculous clutch stats. He's been huge for them in those moments. And I kind of just want to show him some love here on the awards list. And finally, we have the MVP award. This one is, of course, the crown jewel of these awards. It's the one that's most heavily debated, most hotly contested this season. It's been one of the best MVP races of all time. It's a shame that Joel Embiid ended up getting injured because I do think he would have won this award going back to back or at the very least been a very strong contender, but of course it doesn't come anywhere close to the games played. So it comes down to four guys. It's Luka, Jokic, Shea, and Giannis. I have Giannis finishing fourth. I have Shea finishing third. I think he would have had a good shot to win it, but ultimately the rough stretch of play that he dealt with due to his quad injury, I think brought him down a little bit as well as just missing the past few games here until the Kings game where he did play great. I just think that kind of killed his momentum. So unfortunately, as a Thunder fan, I do have Shea finishing third and that leaves Nikola Jokic and Luka Doncic. I think those two guys are going to finish top two in the race. They're most people's picks to win the award and you could go either way. No matter who you pick here out of those two, I don't think you can go wrong. But ultimately, I went with Nikola Jokic. This would give him his third MVP award. I do think he ends up winning it. And he's got a fantastic case. Not saying Luka doesn't, by the way. Luka, if you pick him, and I even battled back and forth before this. Right before I recorded this video, I thought, should I pick Luka as I record in this moment? I am feeling Jokic, though. It's so close. The stats are ridiculous between both of them. Jokic is averaging 26.4, 12.4, and 9. Luka is averaging 33.9, 9.2, and 9.8. Jokic is just a little bit more efficient. The Nuggets are, of course, higher in the standings. Right now, they are the two seed tie with the Wolves. I think they're going to move up to one when they beat the Wolves tomorrow, so they could end up as a one seed. And the Mavericks aren't in a bad spot. They're in the five seed, which seems like where they'll finish. But I think that gap between those seedings is something that I'm going to factor in a little bit here. Also, the fact that Jokic has been missing Jamal Murray a lot of the year. Like, I know we talk about Kyrie missing time for Luka, and that is a very valid reason to give him some more support in that race. But at the same time, Jamal Murray's played less games than Kyrie. He has missed a lot of the season, and yet the Nuggets have not missed a beat without their second play. Player. I know he does still have great players like Michael Porter Jr. and Aaron Gordon and Contavious Caldwell Pope, but Jamal Murray is huge to what they do. Hasn't really mattered. Jokic has put up some of the most insane stat lines I've ever seen. And when I watch him on a night to night basis, I just feel like he is the most impactful player in the game right now. So I'm going to give it to Nicole Jokic. Again, if you pick Luka, I'm not mad about that at all. I think he's a fantastic pick. And if he wins it, that would be awesome. I expect Luka to win a number of them in his career. I just think this year, Jokic ends up barely edging him out in, again, what has been one of the most fun award races I can remember. So those are my award picks. Now let's go ahead and move on to my teams. I'm not going to spend too long on these. If you want to debate them down below in the comments, you can do so, but I know I've already spent a lot of time on the award, so we're going to rush through a little bit. My All-NBA first team, I feel like it's mostly locked in. It's going to be Jokic, Luka, Shea, and Giannis as the four guys, and ultimately, I did go with Jason Tatum to round it out as the fifth player, best player on best team, putting up great stats. I think it makes sense for him to make All-NBA first team. Also remember, these are positionless, so keep that in mind. A second team is Jalen Brunson, Kevin Durant, Anthony Edwards, Kawhi Leonard, and Anthony Davis. Uh, Jalen Brunson been carrying the Knicks this entire season. He's been amazing. Kevin Durant having a ridiculous scoring season, even though the Suns have been disappointing. Anthony Edwards has been probably the best player on the best team in the Western Conference up to this point. Been amazing himself. Kawhi Leonard has locked up defensively as usual, has been hyper-efficient offensively. Big reason why the Clippers finished as a top four seed. And Anthony Davis, like we talked about earlier, one of the most impactful defensive in the world and has been pretty good offensively too. And finally, to wrap things up with my third team, I have LeBron James, DeMontis Sabonis, Zion Williamson, Steph Curry, and Devin Booker. LeBron is still putting up ridiculous numbers, impossible numbers in his age 57 season. DeMontis Sabonis has been a double-double machine, just had one of the longest double-double streaks of all time. Been fantastic for the Kings, their best player most of the year. Zion has been unbelievable. I feel like he's not getting enough love for the steps that he's taken forward for the Pelicans as a ball handler, as a playmaker, still a dominant offensive 
offensive force, especially stepping up in the absence of Brandon Ingram. Steph Curry, it's not been one of his best seasons, but still been really good, and he's trying to keep the Warriors afloat, making a little bit of a late season push here. And Devin Booker barely hits the 65 games played threshold, and has been a monster offensively this entire season. So those are my All-NBA teams. There are a bunch of guys who could be considered snubs. If there's anybody that you don't like me leaving off, let me know down below in the comments. I'm not going to get into it because, again, there are a billion players you could put on these lists. Moving on now to all defensive teams on my first team. I have Rudy Gobert, Bam Adebayo, Herb Jones, Victor Wembanyama, and Anthony Davis. All guys I kind of talked about a little bit in my deep point discussion earlier. And on my second team, I have Derek White, Jalen Suggs, Alex Crusoe, Jane McDaniels, and Chet Holmgren. Chet Holmgren might be a bit of a biased pick. I don't know if he's actually going to end up making a team, but when we talk about the most impactful rim protectors in the entire league this season, I think Chet belongs in that conversation. I've watched what he's done all year for the Thunder. The biggest reason why they're a top five defense. There are other great defenders, but he is the anchor of the whole system. Uh, Jay McDaniels has been great for Minnesota this whole season. Crusoe is a lockdown guard as usual. Jalen Suggs, biggest reason maybe, or at least one of the big reasons. Jonathan Isaac is another guy, but didn't play many games at all, so I didn't put him on this list, but Jalen Suggs, one of the biggest reasons why the Magic are one of the best defenses, and Derek White continues to be a lockdown defender, could even move up to first team, but ends up going to the second team here, just like the guys on the first team a little bit better. And finally, for the all-rookie teams, first team, I have Victor Wembanyama, Chet Holmgren, Brandon Miller, Derek Lively, and Jaime Hawkins Jr. Those first three guys don't really need an explanation, talked about it earlier. Derek Lively has been amazing as a big for the Mavericks the entire season, built great chemistry with Luka, and Jaime Hawkins also been great for the Miami Heat this entire season and filling in for a bunch of different positions and players that have missed time with injury. And then my second team is Kaysen Wallace, Amon Thompson, Gigi Jackson, Asar Thompson, and Brandon Podjemski. Kaysen Wallace has been one of the best guard defenders out of any of these rookies so far this season, has been special, incredibly efficient offensively as a Thunder fan. It's really hard to state just how impactful he is on a night-to-night basis. Alan Thompson, otherworldly athlete, incredible playmaker, great defender. He's going to make a number of all-defensive teams, and he has unbelievable upside. Gigi Jackson really stepped up this season in the absence of basically everybody for the Grizzlies. Great year from him. Asar Thompson, another great defender for the Pistons. Went up and down in minutes, so maybe he doesn't end up making this team. But I think overall it was impactful enough to grab a spot. And Brandon Podjemski started some games for the Warriors throughout the season, come off the bench, but has been a continuous spark plug like some of the defense he's brought to the table and takes charges unlike many other players. With all that being said, those are my 2024 NBA award picks. This was a really hard list to make. There are a number of insane players this season that could have been on different teams, could have moved up or down a spot, maybe could have won some of the awards that I didn't pick. It was a really fun year for hoops. Let me know down below in the comments as I alluded to earlier who your award picks are, either for the major awards, all NBA teams, all defensive, rookie, whatever you want to say. We'd love to hear your opinions. What was your favorite pick of mine? Which was your least favorite? Make an argument for an honorable mention that I didn't talk about again. I was never going to mention anybody, but would love to hear other candidates that you thought of that maybe I didn't consider. And yeah, I think that's all I've got. Appreciate y'all watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. A lot of coverage coming up for the NBA playoffs like next week is going to be insane a video every day with playoff series breakdowns, playoff predictions, reactions to the playing games, which are going to be really fun. It seems like super excited about it. I love this time of the year for hoops, but I appreciate you all watching again. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy all that stuff. I'll see y'all later. Real one safe back.